Can't give you a ride today, Matt. This car's been having a ton of problems. It could break down at any moment. Mm, that'd be a shame. What a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what's going on? I'm Sam Crack. This is my Lemon Lincoln MKC, a car that was bought back by Ford Motor Company because it was deemed a failure. It was then repaired and then put back on sale for a substantial discount, over $20,000 off its original sticker price, and it only had 800 miles on it. In my opinion, not enough time to deem something a lemon, and the car has been amazing except for a few weeks ago when it decided to break down. Now, in the original video when I bought this car, I showed you guys a quick tour of the Lemon car lot that I bought it from, showed you some of the amazing deals that they had, and outlined its Lemon Pass. So if you want to see in detail why this car was bought back and the buying process, you can click the link in the video above. But quickly, this car was bought back because it was shutting off on the previous owner while they were driving it. And and well, this happened a couple times apparently, and they brought it back to the dealership a couple times, making it eligible for a manufacturer buyback in those dealership trips. In some cases, the dealership couldn't even replicate the car shutting off on them. So anyway, Ford ended up buying the car back. I figured that maybe it was just shutting off because of its auto start stop system. The type of people that buy Lincolns are of a particular age group, and maybe they just weren't used to this feature. But then I got a hold of it, and then something similar, or basically exactly the same, happened to myself and my wife. The first occurrence was with my wife, and I'll take you back a few weeks ago when that happened. Here it is right here. The Lemon Lincoln broke down. Right now I borrowed my family member's F-150, and the only other tool I have with me is right here, a battery jumper box. I don't know that that's gonna do anything. Uh, but the car, it shut off randomly at a stoplight. And so we've discussed it before, this car has auto start stop. I, it's gotta be an electrical issue. I don't think the battery jumper box is gonna help very much. But we're gonna figure out right now what's wrong with the car. AAA has been called to tow the car. It is under warranty. But here we go, this is what happens. I guess when you buy a lemon, you gotta be prepared to deal with lemon issues. Open up. Open the doors. All right, good push. You didn't see this, but this is a really busy intersection. A bunch of really friendly people. I want to thank each and every one of them. How push the car from right there where that black truck is all the way here into the parking space right here at a gas station. So, I don't know what's going on. Let's start with just, well that was weird. Let's start with doing a crank cars off and see what happens. You can't hear it, but it's cranking. You can see the hood is moving because I popped it. It's cranking, but not starting. It's showing that there's a battery issue. It's cranking, but not starting. Let's go under the hood and see what's going on. Fords are having this weird battery setup nowadays where you have the negative of the ground all the way in the back here. So you connect it here. Now, let's flip this thing around. It says it's correct. Let's hit the boost button and see what happens. Okay, it's a bad battery. That's all it is, just a bad battery. So, auto start stop is officially a stupid feature. What happened is it must have shut off at a light. Did it shut off a light? And then battery's too weak to start the car again. So we're gonna turn this off and we're gonna get a battery. We're in the Lemon Lincoln and everything seems to be operating all right. Uh, lane keep assist, everything's working right. No weird electronic stuff. Must have just been the battery. I'm gonna bring a battery tester. We have auto start stop off, of course. 
I think that's like a mandatory thing. Just when you get in the car, shut that feature off at this point. I got my decent camera, it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna try and do this as quick as possible. But this car, I parked it at a friend's house, and this is now annoying. Put my foot on the brake, starts right up, no issues. Now that doesn't mean that we might not have a battery issue, but again, I don't know. So I got the hood popped, I've got a battery tester under there. Let's go test the battery and see what's up. Car's off, let's test the battery really quick. It's starting to rain. I wanna thank these guys right here, Ansel, for sending me this battery tester. This is the first time I'll be using it, so it'll definitely come in handy. All I've done is connected to the positive and the ground. This thing powers up. Ooh, it makes some funny noises. Battery capacity, cold cranking amps. This is a 760 cc battery, so we're good to go on that and we'll see what it says. Ooh, and it's testing at 766 cold cranking amps, so our battery looks to be, like it says, in great shape. We need to get this car to the uh, service department because that is a strange issue that clearly is why this car was branded a lemon. At this point, everyone's a little bit relieved that the car is out of a busy intersection. Again, big thanks to all those people that helped out and moved it under its own power to a friend's driveway. Now, to avoid any further issues, especially because on that quick diagnosis that I did that I was clearly wrong about it being the battery, uh, I didn't really want to deal with it because it's under factory warranty. Why not let the techs at the dealership deal with it? I called up Lincoln Roadside Assistance, and that's one of the greatest things about these Lemon cars is that they're under full manufacturer warranty, retaining all the perks like free tow services if the car breaks down, and of course, those free coffee and Oreos that they provide you at the service center. But anyway, called them up, had the car towed to the local dealership. Now, when the dealership opened on Monday because it was towed in over a weekend, they called me first thing and said, what's wrong with this car? We started it, we drove it, there's no check engine lights, nothing funky is happening. Why did you even bring it in here? And I explained to them exactly what happened. I showed them exactly what I did in the video. I, I jumped it with the battery jumper box. I tested the battery though, it seems to be good. I have no clue what's wrong. It's gotta be something electrical, but that again is for you guys to figure out. Now, after I explained that to them, several hours later that same day, they called me and they said, hey, uh, the tech had the car running, and at one point, you know, several minutes or hours later, while he was working on something else, the car just stalled out in the shop. It wasn't driving, he just had it running. At that point, since they had a failure, they were able to go ahead and proceed with the diagnosis, and they had found just a, a loose wire, I guess. A according to them, they went and they repaired the loose wire in whatever fashion they did. I'm gonna put right here a screenshot of my actual bill from the service department explaining what they did. There's a lot of different acronyms, a lot of different things here. The only thing I could tell you is repaired loose connection, they retest and they did a road test and everything was okay. Now, anyway, none of that really matters because less than a full day after getting the car back from the service center, this happened. Only 24 hours later, I'm driving. I'm in the middle of basically rush hour traffic. I'm in a median here and the car is completely dead. It was accelerating, I'd step on the gas, nothing. And this is what it's saying, auto, start, stop, shift to park, then restart engine. So let's see what happens here. Put it in park and it's cranking, no start. In both cases, the car broke down in pretty high traffic areas, but in both cases, the car also did break down only a few miles away from its final destination. In this case, I was about two miles away from where I was going. I got on the phone with Lincoln Roadside a Service. I ordered a tow. While I was in the middle of ordering the tow, I hit the push to start button, and luckily, the car fired right back up. I was able to drive it, again, that couple miles down to a major parking lot where I had it stop. And one time, in between that two miles, the car did stall again. I just pulled off to to the side of the road, I stayed towards the shoulder and waited a little bit, got it running again. So now the car is intermittently stopping and starting. All right, I got the car limped to a parking lot here and uh, died again. And this is what it's saying, auto, start, stop, shift to P, then restart engine. So let's do it, nothing. All right, we're going to shift it to neutral. And... Can I hit neutral now? There we go, I got it in neutral, so we're gonna push it. Just get it right there, behind the stop, I mean, you know, that big open space, so I don't have to push it that far. Here we go. 
All right. Oh, this is a heavy car. Come on, get your foot off the brake. Get your foot off the brake. Okay, now put your foot on the brake. Now go drive it over there. Let's see if it stalls out. So it just kind of starts and stops when it wants to. I'm going to just drive around. We got a big empty parking lot in front of us. And there's one car there. But let's see how long it takes for this thing to stall out again. So it started up. I'm going to go into drive. Oh, there it goes. It just hiccuped a little bit. So it should stop soon. Again, you could feel your foot's on the throttle and it just cuts out. Let me give it some good throttle. Yeah, that worked. Oh, there it goes again. Look, okay, my foot is completely all the way down on the throttle. And there you go. That's what happens. That battery light comes out. The thing is dead. So I'm going to park it at this point. Now, guess what happens next? You're right if you guessed that it went back on a tow truck to that same Lincoln dealership where they diagnosed it to be the same exact connection that was faulty before. And they said they fixed it for real this time. It even says in the bill that they gave me that they secured the cable real tight. So really, no major parts replaced, no new parts. They just re-secured the cable again. I'm hoping this is not a continual issue, but this time we've put around three to 400 miles on the car since getting it back from the service center. And we haven't really had a problem yet. Now, when I picked the car up from the service department, they told me that the wire causing all the issue was this purple wire that is right up top, right here. And if you're looking at this entire harness, it seems to me that this is the main engine control module harness. So it makes sense that a wire in that bundle caused the issue. And they basically told me, you know, if you have the problem in the future before you bring in the dealership just to get yourself out of a pickle, wiggle that wire, push it down in. But at this point, they've said that they went ahead and repaired it. When I bought this Lincoln, I thought it was a no brainer. Buying a car with pretty much every single feature for almost half off, a car that's never been to a major accident or flood or anything like that, a problem that was dot documented on paper and then documented as fixed, it made all the sense in the world. But after experiencing these recent issues, it made me rethink that amazing deal. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below if you think the Lemon Lincoln is still a good deal even after its recent issues or if it will just be a perpetual nightmare. I really do think anything could be fixed and a lot of times it just takes money. In this case, it's Ford's money, not mine, because the car is under warranty. And I do believe the car is still a good deal, given that its most recent issues were fixed in the last trip to the service center. Now, if this issue comes back up and comes back up soon, then I will eat my old words and tell you it's not worth it, regardless of who's footing the bill to fix it. This car is new. It should be dependable and reliable. I want to be able to take it on a thousand mile road trip and not have to even think about it breaking down. Now guys, I appreciate you watching this video. A lot of you have been asking what happened to this car since I posted a picture of it on the tow truck on Instagram. If you're not already following me there, you can go right here. So I hope you enjoyed the update. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you very soon.